Mr. Breitbart, do you care to make a speech in favor? No, all right, Mr. Cronengold. You have five seconds. <laughs> It's the, the yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would urge the member to hurry it up because we've got a lot still to go through, so. Quite. <laughs> we have an additional 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't started timing. Yeah. I'm waiting till he speaks. Please make your argument, Mr. Cronengold. Um, absolutely. Uh, a sunrise clause is completely irrelevant and useless here. If we're going to make a greater change, that will automatically delay it. If we're not going to, then it won't. All right. Is there, is there there's time in favor of the, amen the amendment. Anyone who hasn't spoken yet? Do we need to debate the amendment any further? No. Uh, is there a second to call in the question? Second. Is there any objection to call in the question? Seeing none. The, uh, the question is on the amendment to add a sunrise clause for one year. All those in favor of adding such a clause, please raise your hand. All right, hands down. All those opposed? The no's appear to have it, the no's have it, the amendment fails. Do we need to uh, debate the underlying motion any further? We can't. We can have speeches against. Um, is there any objection to calling the question? All right. All those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hands. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The question is called. The question is now on uh, B.2.11, a young adult award. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The motion moves on to WorldCon 75. We, we are now back at B24. Yep, three stages. Th page 12. We have 20 minutes of debate. Mr. Harris, would you like to make a speech in favor? Which one are we doing? Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. This is a complex issue, as you understand. I also understand, having sat through 10 or 15 years of business meetings, we all get very tired by the third day, especially with all these diversions. Just ask everyone to take a breath and let's give this, and then tomorrow EPH, the respect and time and thought it deserves, because we are engaged in a very difficult set of challenges for the reputation and integrity of the Hugos. And we need to find the space and thought to actually deal with those challenges. I want to give plenty of people a chance to speak, so I'm going to keep my remarks concise. Um, if you're not familiar with the motion, um, please read it. Uh, I don't propose to yield for questions at this time. In essence, we're proposing to insert a second stage in the Hugo ballot between nominating and final. This will involve publishing the long list of 15, and people will be able to vote yes, no, or abstain on whether they believe each of those items is an appropriate candidate to be on the short list. Um, any candidate that is rejected by both having more no's than yeses and at least 600 or 20 percent of the total population of no's, so you need both a large absolute number and a majority against, would be excluded from consideration. Once you've excluded those people, the top five from the nominating ballot would go through <laughs> under whatever counting scheme is in place, whether it's EPH or the current one. Why are we proposing this now, given all these other options are on the floor, um, EPH, 4 and 6 and so on? Essentially, it's very simple. We have to ask ourselves, what is our success criteria for the safe continuation of the Hugo Awards? It is becoming apparent um, that with things like EPH, we absolutely guarantee a couple of good candidates per category. The question is, do we believe that the integrity and reputation of the awards is preserved 
by having a couple of good candidates per category and two or three puppies per category or other similar slate nominees. Personally, I and the people who have put this together do not believe that is an acceptable long-term solution. We also ask that people can understand we're, we're asking to put this through now so that next year, assuming EPH is in place and we've had a year of it, if it's apparent EPH isn't giving us the re results we want, we have this already ready to be ratified and to be taken forward. Because again, time is of the essence. The more years we have of lots of no awards and large puppy presence on the ballot, the more damage we are taking to the awards. What is it that we are essentially doing? What we've aimed to do in spirit is to bring the no award test forward. You know, we are looking only to eject candidates that are seen as being on the long list by abusive process and that the vast majority of voters consider shouldn't be there. This is not about looking for edge cases um, of, you know, oh, I don't really like Doctor Who. This is about the committee of the whole standing up and saying, we do not wish to play this game. One of the features I would suggest of the last couple of years is that, you know, we are a fairly slow-moving democratic organisation and we're confronted with quite a fast-moving opponent who um, probably quite enjoys seeing us tying ourselves in knots. And hence the short title per war games, you know, is sometimes the only winning move is not to play. You know, we're trying to ask people to stand up as they did in the final ballot last year and say, we're not going to play this game. Lastly, I'm going to say two final things. First of all, I'm sure people will stand up and speak to, well, why didn't we consider other things? Because at first sight, 3SV does look like a very negative kind of thing. It's a black ball, effectively, against people. We understand that. We considered other options. We particularly considered the idea of sort of semi-final type voting, which has been promoted online. The challenge is, in our view, that asking people to do a ranked semi-final of 15 candidates in 15 categories is unrealistic. It would not be practical for the members or the administrators or the creators to put together such a large packet, for instance, to allow some kind of choice. And we're not asking people to provide a detailed consideration of, do I think I would like personally to vote for that as a, um, my preference for a winner? Historically, people didn't put things below no award just because it wasn't their personal taste. They typically would put rank things they liked, and then they would maybe put no award or leave the rest blank. Um, no award is there to say, we really don't think this is deserving of consideration, not just that we don't think it's deserving of winning. So lastly, you know, I've seen online a few people saying, we think the intent of the makers is X, Y, Z. And I want to be clear, the intent of the makers is that nominators should basically vote yes unless they have a specific objection. We're not expecting them to read all the works. This is a chance to say, that is abusive process. I absolutely would be no awarding that work. Thank you. I saw the woman back there first, the speech against. I'm Kate Pogg. Some of you may recognise my name. I don't care if you do or don't. I would like to point out that, as written, this candidate, this proposal is for a vote of all the membership. Since some of the membership are committed, and I'm not naming names, but since some of the commit membership are highly committed to having works of their choice stay in and works of their works that they dislike stay out, what precisely does this do to prevent a highly motivated antithetical group from taking membership and then using <coughs> this to knock out worthy candidates? What does this proposal do to enhance the reputation of the Hugo Awards? What does it do to increase the membership which, given the popularity of science fiction as a whole, 